Hello and welcome uh, back to Let's Try. We're trying Old World. Uh, this is going to be pretty ambitious. I don't think this is the kind of game you can really showcase in uh, a half an hour or an hour or two hours or three or four hours. Um, I, I did the tutorial and I, I want to say first and foremost that this game has a very good tutorial. Um, it teaches you the basics of the game whilst not over explaining things and it also just lets you kind of play the game and gives you a helping hand or tip every now and again. Um, I'd like to showcase the tutorial but it's it was four hours long so uh, for me anyway. Um, I'm a little bit uh, I'm a little bit worried about this one because uh, I am historically very bad at 4x games but uh, I want to talk about why I want to cover this one specifically because, uh, well, first of all, it's really good, um, <laughs> just to spoil that, but also for another reason. I'll get into it. I'm going to start a new game. I'm just going to go with whatever. I don't want to kind of get into the minutia. I'll give you a quick cycle through of some of the different um, cultures, uh, different starting uh, leaders you can you can choose. Let the game choose a nation for you. Pick your nation when you settle your first city. Oh, that's an interesting choice. I like that. I'm just going to go ahead and pick Philip Greece because that's what I played as during the tutorial. This game has a lot of uh, tools for, for making, the kind of, uh, making the kind of experience that you want. And I think that that's really important because ultimately this is a game you're going to want to play in... A specific way and the specific way is kind of your way you are gonna want to kind of cultivate your own play style and not just like how you win but how you play you are Philip the Macedonian the uniter of Greece seizing the kingship from your nephew you have risen to the top with shrewd diplomacy and military might leading the now united people of Greece into the old world your fifth wife Olympias was has borne you an heir Alexander already showing an aptitude for military strategy beyond all others. The existing civilizations of this old world do not yet know the strength and knowledge of Greece, but they will learn. Select your settler and found your capital city. You'll also decide which family manages your first city, gaining their advantages immediately. So um, this game has a ton of different mechanics going on, and it's going to be difficult for me to highlight all of them, but I'm going to try my very best. So we're going to go ahead and settle our first city. I'm actually, hmm, I mean, this isn't bad because uh, we we do get quite a lot of those. So, uh, you know what, let's, okay, we can, we can, fortunately, we can see our options by uh, highlighting these. And indeed, I think that, um, well, this, this one seems like just straight up better because we get more hillside. So let's go there. And then we'll we'll go ahead and settle this. I'm gonna go for a uh, for our first city. I'm gonna go for a Sipsalid. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce that, but I'm gonna go for that. We're gonna pick our research. I'm gonna have to talk about all of these things in order, but unfortunately, for myself, uh, there's a lot of different stuff going on. We're probably gonna want to want trapping because we have a uh, good amount of game near our first town. So um, when you're founding your first city, you have a you have a number of families that you can choose from. Um, in order to properly talk about that, I'm going to talk about basically three other games that this game uh, semi incorporates mechanics from. Uh, basically, as far as I'm concerned, Old World is taking uh, a lot of cues not just from Civilization, but it, it really does feel like a sequel, not necessarily to Civ Four, but to Civ Three. Um, there's just quite a few mechanics that were a bit more simpler back in that iteration of civilization that feels uh incorporated into this game and that's a good thing i really i do think that certain things in civilization games could be simplified because they've they have gotten kind of crazy complicated um you know how we build roads how we manage our units certain things are less complex and then other things are more complex there's a lot of that you know don't don't let me uh undersell the complexity of this game so uh another game that this game takes cues from is crusader kings basically uh any game with that uses lineage mechanics and uh so 
you know, along with the fact that we have a, a, a long line, a, a lineage, we're going to want to, you know, we have a family, we have to take care of them, we have to make sure that they're they're happy, that they have a respect for us as a leader, um, but also they have their own stats. And eventually uh, one of our, you know, we have a succession, Prince Alexander is going to succeed us. They're going to develop over the course of, you know, the next several number of turns of years, basically. And then that'll tell us, um, I didn't mean to do that actually. Let's go here instead. We can, we, we'll build a farm. Uh, that's gonna tell us what kind of leader they're gonna become. But along with the, that, we also have basically uh, vassals. They're, they're families, but they're basically vassals, like, uh, you know, in, in, as, a, as is the mechanic in Crusader Kings. We also have relationships with that, them, and we can also, we can look at all characters. So these, uh, this, this is the other family that we have incorporated. These are the Sipsalids. We're gonna want to kind of maintain some kind of poli political relationship with them as well. And basically the takeaway is the, the more people like you, the better you're going to do. So um, we've, we've set our workers to go ahead and uh, start building a farm. I think that that's probably a pretty good first turn. We have another farmer. We're gonna wanna also build a quarry. So, um, so we have like many, many different forms of currency in this game. Uh, we obviously have money, but we also have food, uh, metal working, stone, uh, wood, and then we have orders. So um, in a lot of Civ games or, or, you know, Forex games in general, you can kind of just do whatever you want. Like you can do as much as you want. You can move all of your units. You can, you can upgrade units. You can do whatever you want, right? In this game, it's a little bit different. Um, you you basically have a certain number of orders per turn, uh, per year, basically, and that that is going to limit you to how many units you can you can control. So I, I told my worker um, unit to go and build a farm that used a bunch of orders. Uh, then that means I can't move my scouts, and I also can't move my other worker. Uh, that's unfortunate because I also accidentally wasted some orders there. I'm going to go ahead and set a festival to be the next thing that it builds. They, they want to build a settler, and I understand why that would be the case. I'll go ahead and let that happen. Your wife um, is witty, able to make anyone laugh with their quick tongue and inevitable, sorry, inventive jokes. So now it's our next year, we can uh, start setting our other workers to do stuff. Whenever you move, by the way, it'll tell you, it'll show you how many orders you'll have left after the move. Also these different uh, circles of um, blue hex tells us like basically how many, also tells us how many orders we're gonna use, but like it also gives us a range of like how far this worker can move. So we're gonna go ahead and set this worker to build a quarry. Um, basically every city, how you improve it is kind of like a miniature board game. Um, certain uh, improvements, upgrades are going to function and progress better than, you know, on certain tiles than others. So for instance, a quarry, we're gonna wanna build it near the mountains. And we're certainly gonna wanna build it on a hill, right? So we can see in the bottom right corner there that this hill will provide us with um, more metal, for instance. So we're gonna wanna build a mine on that. But uh, we're gonna want stone. Stone is gonna be very important for building a lot of things. So that's that's you know gonna be the, the next thing that we build. We're also gonna wanna move our scouts. I'm gonna skip tutorials for now. I've, I've been doing a lot of tutorialism. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and have the scout go, come over here and grab this. And we have our first story event. Our scouts report that this area is cursed and blighted. Little vegetation grows here. There are no animals to be seen. A foul smell hangs in the air and ghastly moans can be heard throughout the region. At the center of the cursed land, they discover a deep pit in the ground, which seems to be like, be the source of the moans and stench. Peering over the edge, they can see fires burning deep below the earth. Fill the pit with rock. This would add to our legitimacy. Legitimacy is something we definitely want as a leader and it's going to kind of affect how people see us. We should study this pit. New courtier, court scholar. Interesting. Um, I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna fill it. Uh, apparently, we know of another city site. We definitely. We're definitely gonna want to make use of that. So something I really appreciate about this game is um, it's. It has kind of. Uh, it, it's made building cities a bit simpler. You can't build a city just anywhere, right? 
Uh, it used to be that you would make a settler and then you would just like plunk it, plunk it down anywhere, wherever there was resources, and, and then develop that city. But now uh, you're limited to city sites. So this is a city site over here. And so this is a potential site for a city. Makes sense, right? Um, obviously, any, uh, any town you take from a rival or city you take from a enemy is also a city site. In fact, it basically just becomes your city. So uh, that means that there's a sort of a limited amount of places where you can develop. A scarred veteran soldier crouches in the ruins. She says that she once commanded the armies of a great nation before resistance brought it crashing down. She's willing to share her vast battlefield knowledge if you're willing to listen. Yes. Let's acquire military drill barracks technology. Oh, that, nice. So those are some uh, examples of story events. There's a lot of story events in this game. It boasts about, it says it, says it has 3,000 different story events, which is a lot. Uh, we're also gonna wanna move this scout around to just uncover. Okay, so we have barbarians. I'm gonna move the scout one more over because they're um, basically, when the scout is in the forest, they're invisible, which I think is a really interesting little tactical mechanic. So like if you're playing against, uh, you know, like other nations or if you're even playing against uh, other players you can hide your scouts in the forest and then basically keep an eye on what they're doing which i just think is like it's, it's a little fun it's that's a it's a very fun way of doing things um we should be able to take on the those barbarians but uh, i think i want to develop a little bit more before i do we could um promote these guys and then go and fight barbarians that could be fine Sure, why don't we do that? Promote to combat one, uh, lead to, uh, promote to strike one, adds extra attack. We'll, we'll do strike one. All right, so um, let's also have a look at our notifications. Choose governor, right, are we out of orders? I think we don't have enough orders to choose a governor. This is a day for celebration. Time passes quickly, Prince Alexander is growing up fast and eager to learn. How would you like to educate Alexander? I, he will study philosophy, he will study politics, he will study uh, tactics or commerce. Each each of your uh, children or each of your characters can take on traits, uh, which gives them special abilities that affect you know basically your either your micro game or your macro game. So they can even do things like affect specific units and give them special powers. Um, it can also affect how many resources you get from towns and uh, like all kinds of things. It, the, this game does a really good job of like making all of the mechanics kind of mesh together in this really interesting way. Uh, I'm gonna teach them tactics because we're gonna we're gonna be pretty warlike for the l first little while. Okay, so we are done exp uh, getting that. Um, we can move over here as well. We'll move to the forest just in case there were some enemies over there. We don't want to get spotted. We'll pass our turn. Your wife has given birth to a daughter, Duchess Dionessa. Uh, from the academy arrive at the court bearing news of Prince Alexander. He has been well and is turning out to be as wise as his mother, Queen Consort Olympias. Nice. Carry on the good work. That means Prince Alexander is increasing in wisdom, which means they will uh, give us more uh, technology, or more research points. Uh, take the field. I belong on the field of battle. We can, we can assign... Um, Shift click to lock tooltips in place. Okay, that's really that's really neat. So we could go like, so we can we we can lock this up, and then we can lock that, and then we could lock that. So you can basically have like an entire wiki page on the screen. That's that's really cool. Um, all right. So I think are we out of orders? No, we have tons of orders. Okay. Um, I think we want to send our our warriors over to fight these barbarians. They should be able to take them on. We'll move our scout tribe contact. You've met your first tribe, the Numidians. Just can engage in limited diplomacy, but they generally won't be coordinated in the way opposing nations are. You may also find barbarians when exploring the map. They do not behave like tribes as you are always at war with them. Barbarians are good tar targets for early expansion as they are easier to drive away than a more organized tribe. Finding some barbarians or a weak tribe and claiming their city sites for yourself will be an important step towards growing your nation. So it's a good thing I, I kept to the trees because that means I know about them. We can have a look at what they've got. We don't have a lot of orders left, but fortunately our workers are already doing their thing. Um, our warriors are done for now. Okay, um, we, we, we're good. We're good for now. We'll, we'll put to our scout to sleep for now. Same over here. 
Oh, they had range. Okay, so that means they've done a little bit of damage to us. That's fine. We should be able to take them out still. They're they're barbarians after all. They're, they they don't have a lot of uh, business fighting us. So we have two years left until our settler is um, created, and then we can we can take out take that other city site. Um, I think I'll go ahead and I could make contact with Numidians, but I don't know how warlike they are. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and have the scout check out the other site. A family friend paid a visit to Prince Alexander's school and sends a glowing report about the heir's progress. He appears happy and healthy, and he is excited to return home and take his place in court. The future looks bright. Requires Prince Alexander is student. Send him a, send him a gift of academic texts. Send him wine. Um, let's send him some academic texts. So our farm is built. We can build another farm. I think that would be a good idea. We can also, um, we can chop down some trees to get some extra wood. Uh, you can have a look at, like, all of the things they, they build, and then it will, uh, give you a nice overview of the best places to build them. We're gonna want, oh, well, we don't have trapping yet, but, uh, when we have trapping, we're gonna want to set up a camp at some of these. I guess these are, no, no, these, these require pastures, so we don't have pastures yet. Okay, let's go ahead and build some nets. Next, we'll move our scout over to have a look over here. This looks good. No one over here to, to compete with us. Next, we'll take on these barbarians. And uh, that's going to do it. But yeah, we can have a look at how our uh, family members see us. So our queen consort, Olympias, is upset with us. So we can um, basically spend money to... Uh, do interact with our family members uh they generally always cost 200 as far as i'm i've always seen we can try and influence them and that will ho potentially um, improve their mood of us it can either uh, change their opinion of us or it can lead to a loss of legitimacy we do have a bit of extra money so i'm going to go ahead and do this so prince philip for the next uh, year or so is going to uh, attempt to um influence queen consort olympias we can also do the same to Prince Alexander. They are also upset with us. But you know, like, you know, as we've, we've just started, you know, people don't know what to make of us yet. You can see how much legitimacy we have. Also, I mean, as we progress, uh, eventually King Philip is gonna get uh, some ambitions that we're gonna possibly wanna create, uh, complete. But those are gonna be like kind of end game. They're, they're, gonna, they're not gonna be simple. Uh, you hardly recognize the young man who returns from training. Prince Alexander has spent the last several years studying to become a useful member of the court, and now he is ready to serve. We should celebrate the occasion. Hold a military parade and training exercises. This will give them more experience, or we could give them more discipline. I think more discipline would be good. So we have our new um, settler. We can go ahead and throw them down over here. This seems like a good place. I think I do want to have more of the mountain so we get more stone. Your city borders will grow. Have a look around at what's going over here. Landmark discovered. Lagodeki Beach Forest. Extra legitimacy. So that spent quite a lot of orders. That's fine. We don't really need to do anything else for now. Ah, our workers are finished doing the working on the quarry. So I think next we'll want to build a mine. We might want to build a barracks. Barracks are really great for training up units when they're not basically working. We could do that and then when our warriors are done fighting the barbarians over here, we could have them and just like plant them on the barracks. So unfortunately there is another set of barbarians over here that's kind of brutal because we, I don't know if we can take both of those on now. After one too many nights of revels, Prince Alexander is now drunk. Oh no. Your wife doesn't particularly enjoy your company, but then who can blame her? She didn't ask to be married to you. It's time to change that and start making an effort to get to know her. Wife, what makes you happy? Life good. Love wife. She replies to outwit everyone else and make them dance to my tune. I'll do my best to keep this in mind. My spouse cares about my interests. Plus 40 opinion for 20 years. All right, let's, uh, let's take out this encampment. This is now a... Uh, like a proper city site. Can't, I wonder if our, now our scout cannot take on the barbarians at all. Uh, I wonder if maybe I should switch from a festival to uh, building another warrior. I think that that would probably be wise. Um, festival, by the way, the reason I chose a festival is it leads to growth, which leads to more citizens. Uh, and citizens are something we use to basically upgrade 
uh, some of our urban improvements like the quarry or the farm or the nets. It can be very good for obtaining more resources. Um, all right, let's make continue our way over here. And I do think that that middle square is gonna be a good place. So we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and set Argiad champions. That's gonna to lead to more uh, warfare training, training rate. We could also get more culture. I mean, these are, so all of these families basically correlate to different benefits, right? So you have your, you've got your warfare, your growth, uh, then you have your culture and your, your research, your science. Um, so, and you can only pick three of these over the course of the game. If you pick, once you've picked three, then the last one is gone. Uh, I definitely, I, like I picked Sipsalid because I want to uh, improve our odds of growth right away. And I think war, war is a good second. So this city is, is now idle. Um, we're gonna want to probably focus, we, we, wanna, we want another uh, worker, but I generally go for a festival first because then it leads to a bit more growth. But I guess it that's maybe unwise. We might wanna just do a worker because then you, you wanna generally have like one worker per city. You can upgrade um, workers to a militia. So I'm, I'm, I'm surprised they gave me a militia. That's a little bit, uh, that's odd. But uh, I'll go ahead and put them to sleep here. By the way, there's a really nice um, shortcuts in this game. You know, if you wanna put a unit to sleep, uh, it's just like shift space. And then there's like other uh, things you're gonna wanna do often, like, you know, for instance, if you want to build uh, build a structure, but you don't have enough resources, you can buy whatever resources you need, right? So instead of buying all of the resources you need to say build a wonder, you can uh, just like alt click the the build the wonder button and then it will automatically buy all of all of the resources you need really expensive purchase but uh, a worthwhile one sometimes and i just appreciate the inclusion of some of those shortcuts for for people who have played a lot of these games um all right so we just have the scout left to move just checking out this area i don't know if this is a particularly great city site but because there aren't a lot of city sites i i will probably end up taking it anyway we could clear some of the land around there and build some farms, so it will eventually be valid. So that our warrior over there is just about dead. So uh, I haven't really talked about this yet, but this is how technology works. We can look at the tech tree and make uh, decisions, you know, f that lead to kind of end game trees. And you know, so there's a there's a sprawling tree, right? But I think what I I appreciate about this is that. It gives you a set of cards of like what what available technology you have right now. You can't just like pick whatever is on the tree. Um, and along with the cards that represent new technologies, it'll off also offer you free bonuses. Like for instance, a free settler. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take the free settler because um, it's a free settler and it's only gonna take three years versus like five to seven to 10 for a new technology. If you don't take the free bonus, it's gone. You don't get like, you, you don't get to a second chance on it the next time you, you get a uh, get to roll the technology. This is a not particularly good over here. Our warriors are probably going to die on the next turn. I could bring them back over here uh, and then try and heal them. Let's go ahead and force march and then heal them. So as long as they're in our borders, we can heal them. I, I really didn't want to, I, I couldn't risk losing them. That does mean that we're going to have to re-earn that city site, unfortunately. We were working on a barrack, so maybe we can improve our warriors a little bit before sending them back. For a long time, the Agriad uh, family have expected to marry one of their scions to Prince Alexander. But more recently, a rich merchant has offered a large incentive to marry one of his children to him instead. While our agreement with the Argiads was informal, breaking it would still have some repercussions. Then again, money has all sorts of uses. So if we take this, uh, Argiad's opinion of us will be reduced by 40, but we'll get close to 300 coins. If we then uh, stay true to our roots, we'll get more um, training each year, and our opinion, uh, Argiad's opinion of us will increase. We'll also get... Um, the commander, uh, sorry, we'll, we'll, we'll get uh, Hipparchia, the younger, who has some pretty good stats. They've got a commander stat uh, trait, and they also have um, some extra abilities. They've got courage and discipline. So honestly, I think that this is the better of the two deals. Money is great, but we actually, we're okay for money. 
for now. So we're, get, we're about to get our first ambition. Kill five enemy units is a potential ambition or we could control four cities. I think controlling four cities is more likely because we're already working on our potential third and fourth, like we have the, the sites available to us. So we could uh, potentially achieve this in the next couple of years. So if you manage to complete 10 ambitions, by the way, you win the game. That is a potential win condition. So we've built a net. I'm gonna go ahead and build another net. Nets uh, lead to more money and uh, also culture. Culture is very good for improvements. We're, we're probably gonna build a lot of our necessary uh, buildings and um, urban improvements in this city. This is our basically our capital city after all, right? So we have also finished the barracks. This is good. Um, we would, I would build pastures, but it looks like we don't, like we don't have that yet. We don't have that technology. Like mother, like son, a trusted advisor informs you that for better or worse, Duke At Atalus is showing signs of taking after his mother, Queen Consort Olympias. How this influence will take shape is yet to be seen. Alas, wit is not vulgarity. Duke uh, Atalus becomes witty, eloquent, or uncouth. Okay. They became eloquent. Nice. This gives them be uh, better traits as a governor, possibly as a leader. Um, they have less opinions of intolerant characters, more opinion of eloquent characters. There's a lot of things that happen uh, when it comes to these traits. So we could build another barracks, but I think one's enough for now. Uh, I think I will go and build another mine. Or a mine. We, we don't have any yet. Uh, our warriors, we're going to go ahead and heal them. And we're going to need to do that one more time. They're going to gain a bit of experience by uh, sitting on this. We'll do a bit more exploring. There's another city site. We're definitely going to want to make use of that. I'm glad I took that free settler. That was, uh, that was a good move, considering it played into our ambition. Your level. Higher levels of culture unlock additional improvements and wonders for your city. Each new level will also trigger a positive culture event for the city. Today, a group of, labor, a group of laborers has decided to join your workforce, granting you a new worker. This is great. Uh, that's actually fantastic because it means that uh, we can have them put, put them to work at this other town immediately. I guess I didn't put that worker on the barracks, unfortunately. That was that was 100% my bad. Ripe lands. Reports portray the Vandal lands as a valuable source of potential plunder. We should consider seizing this opportunity and taking it from them. Was unafraid of tribes, Vandals, war. This will put us at war with the Vandals right away, but it will give us some legitimacy. Sure. We'll go to war with the Vandals. This might be a mistake, but um, I'm going to make it. <laughs> Here's our new worker. I'm going to go ahead and send them to the other town. And that's going to do it. All right, so we have a, another potential bonus of stone. We don't want to fall behind when it comes to our technologies. So we're going to go ahead and uh, pick, a, pick a technology. Um, I can definitely understand administration being the one that they're recommending. Uh, granaries basically, it gives us quite a lot. It improves uh, farms. And this kind of leads into what I was talking about, like the, the board game aspect where uh, you want to kind of plan how your cities work and to, to maximize the yield and, and of resources. But, um, I'm, well, this takes 13 years. So yeah, actually I will go with the administration. That makes a lot of sense actually. So we have our new settlers. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and send them. I think I want to send them over here. Might be a mistake because uh, we are that's pretty close to the enemy border, but um, I think that that will be worth it. I definitely want to take this land. I'm really kind of worried about our scouts, but the, uh, the the barbarians don't really seem to be doing much. So I think we're f we're good enough health. We could we could go. I'm gonna go ahead and promote these guys. Although I think I can promote them after I move them. Yeah. If you promote them, it basically ends their turn. Promote to ranger plus 25% from trees. That would be great because then we could attack from those trees and do extra damage. So let's go, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and move our scouts to the other forest. They'll still be invisible. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and put our other scout to sleep. We can hurry production. I know uh, about this, but I'm not sure if I want to do that just yet. 
restless leader. You have felt a certain restlessness. You simply aren't content to wait about at home, bored by the mundanity of palace duties and court ceremony. Being a commander, you are eager to visit foreign military officers and ac academies and study their leadership styles. Shall you set out into the world at large on a grand adventure? Uh, this will cost us money, but they become explorer. They cannot marry, cannot have children, cannot be a governor, can only be part of exploring events. This would give not doing this would give King Philip extra XP, wisdom. Yeah, that's it. Extra XP and wisdom. I understand the temptation to do this other one, but at least it can still be a commander by doing this. So I think I'll, I will take that because I want to I want to see what uh, what we have on offer. All right, so our other worker has completed uh, building the the other nets. Um, we could build an uh, Odeon. This would give us more culture per year, but also take more stone. I think I want to do more quarries before I consider something like that. Where can we build a quarry? There's a, a nice, oh, actually plus nine available here, but I think we want to turn that into a pasture eventually, so that's not ideal. Um, I think we. I would like to turn this into a quarry. Yeah, their worker is uh, is doing all right, so we're gonna we're gonna send them over here. Uh, how's our wood doing? Wood is a one of the few problem resources in the beginning because we don't really have a sustainable way of getting it without just cutting down trees. That's totally vi viable, but like we don't have a basically way of turning it into an income. If that makes sense. Um, eventually, we do get woodworking, but it's a technology we have to unlock. Um, Okay, so we could get another quarry here. That would be good. Build a barracks. That would be possibly useful. Um, mine. I think I want to build a farm if I can, just to get things going here. But as you can see, uh, the, the food po uh, possibilities here are not great. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these trees down. That's what uh, they're done. I think they're done for the turn. They don't have enough to... We, we don't have any orders, so we can't tell them to, to build anything else. I'm a little bit worried about what um, what our friends over here are, gonna, are, are doing. Oh, oh, they came out to meet us. Judaism founded in Quito. Duke Atalus. Atalus is now old enough to be tutored by courtiers. Can we do that? Make chosen heir. Well, we don't want to do that. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna go ahead and move the warriors to the trees so that they get a bonus, and then they will indeed do more damage. This would be the best of all worlds, because then we get basically all of the game. Oh, we don't have enough order. Uh, they, they can't, they can barely just not do it. We could force march them. Let's go ahead and do that, and then we'll found a city. Let's do another Argiad city. Look at that, the only thing we didn't get was uh, were those cows. Fantastic. Uh, we'll go ahead and make them uh, make another worker. Actually, uh, we might want to make a um, warrior instead. We'll make a warrior. Ultimatum. As you and your wife enjoy the views of the outskirts of Greece, your caravan is set upon by a gang of raiders. The ruffians round up your servants, taking full inventory of the goods you brought with you on the voyage. Your wife will fetch a fine price on the market, says the gang's leader. I will make you a deal. Give us this beautiful woman and we will let the rest of you go. Cannot part with my treasures and let them have Olympias. Such an offering is insulting. I value nothing more. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't... No longer exploring. Wow. So this is brutal. We either lose our wife... Um, they become missing. Um, I kind of want to do this just, and obviously we have choices that are required, uh, other things are required to, to make them happen. I kind of want to do this just because then maybe some more interesting story things will happen in the future. Duke Atalas is growing up fast and eager to learn. How would you like to educate them? Let's teach him politics. Um, so they have finished clearing that. Let's build a farm. Prince Alexander and Princess Consort ha Hipparchia have given birth to a daughter, Duchess Nakia. Now old enough to be tutored. A letter arrives by courtier from Duke Atalus at the academy. Dear Philip, 
As part of my instruction at the academy, my tutors have directed me to write to you. All, is, all has been going well, and I have little to complain of. I miss mother at times, but I must carry on. Interesting little flavor text there. I appreciate that. Well, uh, here's the thing is I'm sure <laughs> maybe that wasn't <laughs> meant to be so, um, like, apt, considering she is missing. Time passes quickly. Duchess Dionessa is growing up fast and eager to learn. Uh, she will study philosophy. Yeah, let's teach her philosophy. So we finished building the mine there. Uh, we might want to build another mine for some more metal. But I think uh, another farm would be a good idea. Let's uh, see if we can't kill these barbarians. Yes, we can. Scout is vibing. End of year. We need, we need another settler. This warrior is almost done over here. In fact, they are done now. I'm going to go ahead and send them over to this city over here. They are, uh, they're done. So maybe we should, um, make a stone cutter. You really gotta, you gotta be on that stone. Stone is used for so many things. Fisher specialist, extra growth, extra food. Spreads borders. Oh, that'd be nice. So we could get those crabs, maybe. Yeah. Let's go ahead and, uh, do that. So our workers over here are, need something new to do. We could build the oracle. That is actually a, um, that is a wonder. Plus two victory points, plus 10 gold per year per religion, plus one tech card hand size. On completion, free agent network in all holy cities, wonder of the world. Hmm, this is, uh, this is actually really tempting. We could do that. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. We'll build a wonder. Why not? I mean, there's many reasons why not. I just realized uh, we should build another settler instead of a uh, fisher. We're gonna ho go ahead and bring um, these guys back. We're gonna we have tons of training, so we're gonna go ahead and force march them onto the barracks. Oh, we don't have enough orders, so never mind. We can promote them also. Let's give them strike two. They're gonna be very important for fighting our next foe. Really, I guess uh, you know what I should do is make contact with the other people. The royal family of Hati visits the court. Oh, there we go. Never mind. <laughs> During a feast, Prince uh, Mursili of Hati uh, makes a shocking boast about how much better a ruler he will be one day. King Hatusili, the able of Hati, chides him for his brashness and turns to us for support. What do we say? Well, we don't know this person. Oh, we do know this person. Mursili's youth reveals his great ignorance. So this would reduce our uh, Prince Mursili uh, opinion of us by 40, but it would improve our uh, the opinion of King ha uh, Hatusili. I'm sorry, I, I'm butchering all of this. Without a doubt, Hatus Hatusili is a laughingstock. This, uh, this doesn't seem great. Although, here's the thing, right? Maybe worth it. Because um, Prince Mursili is, of course, the succession of this nation, right? So maybe we want to improve uh, their opinion of us because then we'll have a stronger relationship with them when they succeed. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take the second option. It might create problems with, uh, with the, that nation for now. A letter arrives from Duchess Dionassa describing her classes. Hours spent learning, simulating debates among peers and tutors, with the nights spent exploring the heavens. At the end of the letter, a proscript reads, If you could spare the money, I would like to buy some tools for the more advanced aspects of my studies. Shall we indulge this request? Sure. Oh, we cannot spare the money. How come? Well, we don't have enough money. Oh, no. We, we lack the resources to add anyone. All right. Um, oh, Philip is you. <laughs> Promote King Philip, the settler. Extra wisdom, extra courage, extra discipline. Well, let's take courage from four to five. That would be nice. We're, I like to, here's what I like to do. I like to make um, an individual ruler as good as it can be on their specific stats. So like Philip, King, King Philip is a great uh, war monger. So we're gonna wanna be warlike for the next little while. Then, I, you know, I want to pr um, plan for our for Prince e Alexander to possibly be better in other aspects, although they seem to have more courage. So they're already pretty warlike. So we're probably gonna wanna be pretty warlike. 
Um, but like, if the you know if the next person was like say had other or different traits, then we could kind of plan like, okay, that'll be a year of or, you know a, a, a generation of like just growth. We're just gonna grow for a while. We're not gonna we're not gonna we're gonna vibe. Okay, don't worry about it. We're gonna want to build a quarry. We're very very low on stone because I decided to build a wonder. So our warriors are gonna vibe for a bit on there at a general. We could add a general. These warriors are making their way over here. We'll just go ahead and plunk them down there. We can promote them as well. Give them extra combat. There's a lot of trees over here, so that's a potential thing we could make use of. But I think, honestly, combat is just the way to go. We should do a bit more exploring. High on the sea cliffs, a circle of round stone ruins gazes out over the crashing waves. The inhabitants of these alone isolated dwellings must have desired true serenity. One explorer recognizes familiar symbols in nearby cave carvings, what could be seen as early icons of Judaism. Perhaps the site was a primitive temple or monastery of its followers. Uh, return the temple to its former glory, use the rubble for needed supplies, ignore the ruins of Mar well, sure, we'll, we'll, we'll help it out. You know, you can, you can also do some interesting things with religion in this game where you basically use it to convert uh, other nations rather than like going to war with them. Oh, there's some more vandals over here. Oh, interesting. I'm glad I kept these trees. Scouts encounter an expedition of strangers following a similar route. They call themselves Romans and hail from a distant land beyond the horizon. Sharing a cordial meal, the two groups exchange stories and souvenirs. How shall our scouts conclude this meeting? Show them our goodwill with a gift. Oh, uh, we've been spending a lot of money, but, uh, you know, it would be a go a long way. Keep the meeting civil, but that is all. We must dominate them. No, we don't want to be at war with two people. We'll give them a gift. All right, our next our next business. Uh, I think pastures. Sli uh, roads are, are very tempting. Roads, like, basically make travel between your cities, like, really, really quick. Uh, it would be really nice to get that done, especially since we're at war. Um, pastures would be so nice. You know what? We'll, we'll do labor force. I'm sorry. The roads are too tempting. They're, they're, they're too good. All right, we're gonna build a granary. Uh, this is going to help this place develop because it's there's not a lot of very good land here for for food. Okay, these farmers, we could build another farm. I like to build, I like to plan around the um, eventuality of building granaries. In fact, we could probably just like place one here. So we'll cut these trees down and, and build a uh, granary. That'll improve those farms. Wanna, I guess we want to heal these guys still one more time. Like all aristocratic Greek children, part of Atalus's education is in learning the art of the muses. To play the lyre and recite uh, ancient poetry seen as essential skills, they are sadly not Atalus's forte, but he loves playing the music. Will you encourage his passion for the arts? Well, we've been, we, we really don't have any money, um, but uh, this is nice because it actually gives them more discipline which is, I think, a good good thing. Oligarch uh, Patia, I, I can't pronounce any of these. The Gracious has sought a meeting to discuss the governorship of Pella. The oligarch argues that as the seat of the Sipsalid family, it is only right that a Sipsalid should lead the city. Suggests that Parmenio, the younger, as an ideal candidate, will you accept her preferred governor? Sure. I should have been assigning a governor to this place like long, long ago. So that's actually totally fine, and they they seem to be doing a good job. Can we do? It must be a different family than Argiad. Requires garrison, stronghold, or citadel. We do want to do a stronghold. Once we get a stronghold, we can uh, build our special unit uh, as the Greeks, which uh, is the hoplite. We have we get two special units, and one of them is the hoplite. The other one is very difficult to obtain. All right, next unit. They 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 should be good enough. They're healed enough. Oh, they, you guys better not be scouting out my... Wait, what, who are these? Oh, they're a scout for the Hati. You better not be scouting out my city site over here. I need that for my ambition. Hati is now at peace with the Numidians. Well, that's not really good. Oh, no, that is good. That's fine. Time passes quickly. Uh, Arkadamia is growing up fast and eager to learn. How would you like to educate her? She will study tactics... Yeah, discipline. I think discipline is just very good. Build a quarry. Quarries would be good. I feel like we just need to continue improving our food and growth here. But I don't know, quarry would be good. Let's do a quarry. 
we want to we want to keep the city site safe for now. Uh, I, they will eventually attack the vandals, but we'll we'll keep them there for now. We'll also keep exploring. Harvest resources has moved on to some furs. Harvesting is a great way to boost my early economy, so we can harvest these furs. This is just like a one-time action. Uh, eventually, they become available again, but not for a while. This is another potential site. The Numberless, a chief of the Gauls. Gauls. The Belgia, the Menepi, M Menepi, the Senones, the Helvati. Our tribes are numberless, too many to name. We are strong, what are you? Uh, <laughs> we could just keep offering the money. We are clever and offer knowledge. King Philip becomes foolish. Um, no. We are mighty and offer war. I don't know, maybe. Uh, let's give him some money. I don't want to be at war with everyone. Monkey Philosophy. During one of your visits to the Academy, Duchess Dionessa asks you to come to see her pet monkey. She recently rescued the furry creature from a local market and fell in love with it. You worry where this obsession with her monkey might lead. I don't know, just give her more wisdom, I guess. Vengeful against King Philip. A queen consort does not like us anymore. <laughs> Which makes sense, you know. We'll keep that those guys there, we'll keep those guys there. We'll have our scouts continue uh, scouting. Oh, oh, that's the Numidians. Now that Duke Atalus has completed his study of politics, how shall he contribute to the court? Orator, a powerful and influential p politician. Judge, a wise advocate for the people. As leader, plus 40% religion options. I do think I like this, the judge more. And he can serve as a governor or chancellor. We don't have this one yet. Requires zealot, judge, or builder. Requires spoked wheel. I guess we need more technology before we can get that. So our worker is finally available over here. We can possibly make use of this. We still don't have... Wait, well, we don't... Oh, we do have camps. Okay, so let's, uh, let's do camps. Camps are gonna be great in this town. It's gonna help a lot for, for progress. Okay, we're done this granary over here. Um, what do we need? We could use some more metal, so let's build a mine. Continue keeping them there. I could totally have those, uh, warriors, like, sleep, but I might forget that they exist if I do that, so that's why I'm not doing that. Uh, these warriors are doing kind of nothing right now. Harvest some citrus. Nice. I'm gonna send the warriors over here so that they protect this city site. Um, can we do a settler? That's gonna take a little bit longer than I'd like. So we're, we're kind of neck and neck with Rome right now. You have successfully exerted your influence upon Duke Atalus. They are influenced. In, in a surprise piece of news, you receive an update from your daughter, Arcademia. Uh, Academy scholars respect her and the other students compete to befriend her. Just our next of success succession, so we'll have her become uh, likable and that way we can set her as a governor. Even as a child, your daughter, Duchess Dionassa, possessed a faraway gaze, a desire to explore the world, so it is no surprise when she asks your permission to join a scouting mission. Always remember your parting words. This is a beautiful world full of wonders. She becomes exotic, plus charisma. Scout our enemies and report back to me. Extra defenses. Sure, we'll, we'll let her explore. Has completed her study of philosophy. How shall she contribute to the court? She can be a judge as well. Uh, we already have a judge, so I don't think I need another one right now. We'll, we'll make her a builder. Approach us asking for a truce. Do we approve the terms? Yes, the fighting must end. This is actually, well, we only, we lose one legitimacy, but I think that that's okay. We gained six legitimacy by basically declaring war right away. Our adorable court monkey's behavior has gone from bad to worse. He escaped from the menagerie and made his way through the capital, inciting local wildlife. By the time he was recaptured, some of our city's finest improvements were in shambles. Bad monkey. Enough monkey business. No longer pet monkey owner. One improvement destroyed in Pella. Nah, we'll keep the monkey. So wh which improvement was it destroyed? A hush falls over the court as ki Queen Consort Olympias arrives. Excuse me? She's back. Salt stains her torn clothing while bruises and scrapes cover her arms and face. Her ragged-looking companion eyes the guards nervously my liege it is a blessing to see you again at times i thought i would die before i could return to you olympias takes a breath steadying her voice you wouldn't believe the tales i have to tell i met a brilliant fellow who i convinced to join our court he's a diplomat he has charisma he's got some good bonuses 
Well, she, all, she was already pretty wise. Giving her more wisdom and discipline would be really nice. So I, I, I know that's maybe the boring choice, but I'm going to go with that. She is uh, super angry with me, and I don't blame her, honestly. We're, we're going to go ahead and influence her. Have a nice heart-to-heart -heart chat about how I totally just gave her up. Oh, our, our nets, repair nets, or it will be destroyed in year, 10 years. Okay. Duke Atlas, being superstitious, believes in many strange and mysterious things. Word of our knowledge of military drill has traveled far. An emissary representing King Romulus, the able of Rome, arrives at court, humbly requesting that we share the Rome with Rome what we know. If we do give it to them, though, they might return the favor later. Let's be let's be friends to Rome. I know this is not canon. Um, all right, so we have another settler. Finally, it's it seemed like forever. I kind of like this site over here more. I like this one over here more. Let's let's go ahead and take that one. Build our farm. Uh, we'll build our quarry. We could start working on a road. We could start building on uh, building roads very very soon. Actually, the, our our oracle is almost done. We'll maintain that. I guess we'll maintain that. I don't know if that's like super useful, but we will. You are now known as Philip the Able. Judaism has established legalism theology. The oracle completed by Greece. You have successfully exerted your influence upon Queen a Consort, but appear weak in the process. That's okay, she's less angry with us. We lose a little bit of legitimacy. We have, we're doing pretty well with legitimacy, so I think that's fine. After recent exposures to danger, Duke Atalus has acquired new phobias and lost some courage. Now old enough to be tutored by courtiers, okay. Oh, Egypt. Troops encounter a group of traveling artisans. They say that their nation of Egypt, Egypt has already established a great civilization in distant lands, but they wish to see the world. Invite the travelers to settle in Greece, gain farmer. Tell them nothing. Tell them cap. Take them captive to learn Egypt's secrets. But we gain so much research by doing that. Yeah, let's do that. The Oracle. It is done. To pagan Greeks, the Oracle of Pella is the center of the world. The temple area is built on the slopes of a sacred mountain, the site where they believe a god slew the gargantuan snake python. Now priestesses to Pythia inhale smoke and divine prophecies uh, from their god, answering the question of supplicants. The sacred way that leads up the mountain is adorned with displays of art and wealth as the families compete to show their dedication and wealth. The sacred site will stand as a testament to our people for all time, a symbol of our accomplishments today and of the glories yet to come. With this wonder, my legacy will endure. A talent for geometry. Arcademia uh, has shown a remarkable aptitude with mathematics and geometry, rapidly mastering the basics. During a visit to the court, Academia asks for advice on the best path to apply these studies becomes an engineer. Um, let's let's have her work on uh, engineer. She'll, she'll become an engineer. Our adorable court monkey is starting to become a political liability. Courtiers worry that you spend too much time playing with him and not enough time governing. He is so ridiculously adorable. Listen, if, if I don't end up doing like a series or anything, I, I love this narrative of King Philip being obsessed with a pet monkey and refusing to give it up despite it just destroying everything. Wind passes through the trees as you walk through the streets of Pella. Getting away from the palace has an invigorating effect, generating new ideas and questions of ambition. Will you take one of these ideas forward? Iron can be tough to find. We'll make a stockpile so our military never runs out. Start ambition, produce 400 iron. Uh, that would take a long time. I don't know about that. Quarries are the future. Their stone will make roads, buildings, and great wonders. Control six quarries. I, we're already almost there. Well-trained craftsman and specialist. I like the quarries one. We're already almost there. We're finally about to complete one of our ambitions. I feel like that's kind of a good place to leave this. I kind of also want to focus on culture. Let's do Argyad. Philip the Pioneer. You have completed an ambition. Control four cities plus 10 legitimacy. With our recent expansion, Greece begins to take shape. After several busy days spent overseeing the affairs of your newest city, you take a moment to reflect on your progress. Where will your ambition carry you next? Let's stay focused on Greeks. Greece's expansion. Control seven cities. I will prioritize the growth of urban centers. Control six urban improvements. We must focus on the governance of our new cities. Ambition maintain four governors. Sure, let's do seven cities. So we have another ambition. So here's the thing, right? Um, you might have noticed King Philip is looking a little bit long in the tooth now, right? They are now 60 years old. Eventually they will die. Uh, there's no stopping that. And Prince Alexander will become the next uh, heir, successor to Greece. 
um, when that happens, these ambitions don't go away. They become legacies and we can still complete them. However, we do have a time limit on those ambitions. It might be that we can't complete all of them. If we can't complete all of them, then maybe an ambitious victory is not for us. So we have uh, technologies to get. I think husbandry would honestly be the best one for us right now. I'm gonna take, yeah, I mean, it's even recommending husbandry. We have so many tiles that can take advantage of that. So let's go ahead and set our uh, next camp on this, on this tile. Uh, the Oracle is done. I'm gonna start building roads. That's gonna, it's gonna take a while. We could promote this unit. Let's go ahead and do that, strike three. We can go ahead and promote this unit to combat one. We should uh, have these units, like we should have a barracks at each of these cities so then we can set our unit on the barracks and then just give them passive XP. Pretty sure we're gonna wanna have a worker over here. So I think uh, my biggest, like not problem, but like flaw as a player when it comes to Forex games is I'm not, I'm not really an aggressive player. You might've picked up on that. Like I don't tend to want to go to war or attack other nations. I, used, I usually like to focus on growth uh, and, and just kind of expansion. So slavery or freedom is in need of decision uh, regarding its labor force. Some in court support the system of slavery while others wish to keep freedom a virtue. What shall we decree? Uh, start law of slavery, um, extra orders every year, all cities, plus one discontentment per year. That makes sense. Our subjects will be free. Uh, this costs some civics as well. More technology, more culture. I feel like that would be nice. So let's go, you know, freedom. Freedom sounds good. I, I feel pretty good about that decision, you know? Continue building some roads. We need to repair this site. And um, we can also have, well, we don't have enough. Do we have enough? No, they've already done their thing. One nice little bit of conveyance that it took me a little while to catch on to is that you can tell if a unit has taken their turn if they're no longer able to do stuff with the little icon above their head. That's that's a nice little touch. And actually there's a nice, a lot of little touches like that that uh, really help. Unexpectedly returned to the capital for a short visit. She seems weary from her travels, but is willing to continue exploring if the court desires it. Found a religion, extra legitimacy. Commissioned a great exploration. Sure, let's found f find a religion. <laughs> Zora, I, I do not know how to pronounce this at all. But we, uh, we have a religion now. The fire cults. Zoroastrianism has taken hold in Apollonia. <laughs> yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's offer stone. Let's be on good terms with our, our newfound religion. Let's convert to, uh, Zoroastrianism. I, I, I'll never pronounce that name correctly, I'm sorry. You converted. We have now converted. We are now part of a religion. We can use religion to basically, uh, kind of influence our other other people like for instance uh queen queen our queen well we can i think our cooldown is is we just used our prince philip to do something but we can use religion to kind of like uh, influence our other family members which can be very helpful has converted so our princess consort uh hyperkia has has converted finds enjoyment in hurting others she is cruel jeez oligarch pella uh, Pelopidas, the younger, has converted. Nice. A lot of people are converting. Oh no. Babylonians. Two overturned wagons are discovered in a clearing. Their goods scattered across the grass. A Babylonian woman and her children weep over a dead body. The survivors claim that a bear attacked them without warning. Escort the survivors to the nearest settlement. Could lead to future events. We'll we'll escort them. Why not? We have Babylonians. It looks like they're at war with someone, maybe? With Egypt? Representatives from the Academy arrive at the court bearing news of Archimedia, the affable. She has been well and is turning out to be a daring, as daring as her father. Connections versus relations. For a long time, the Argeid family has expected to marry one of their scions to Duke Attalus. But more recently, the Gulls have offered to formalize our peaceful dealings if one of their women ma can marry Attalus instead. While our agreement with Argyads was informal, breaking... Okay, I gotcha. Uh, we shall marry Obalda the Gauld. Uh, I'm not sure I like uh, Cyanain uh, of Pylos. So yeah, let's do the Gauls. Adopt state religion? Sure. So we've, we've adopted religion. Solid. So we definitely want to build some more quarries since that is now our ambition. This is a good-ish place for building quarries. There's a lot of good places here for that. One more, I think we'll actually do it. So we're already we're already good on that front. 
could also build another quarry there, although that one's not nearly as good. And continue uh, building roads. We do eventually want to build another settler because our growth has been kind of slowing down a bit. We could create a Zoroastrian disciple. Interesting. We can create monasteries and temples. That is an interesting idea. I kind of like that idea. We could go all religion. Let's give it a go. I might, maybe combat isn't for me. Maybe instead I could, uh, I could try and influence our other opposing or enemy nations religiously. I am now Philip the Good. The health of Queen Consort has taken a serious turn for the worse. She's now severely ill. No good. Given, ah, so we now have a, uh, a son from our, our Gaul and Duke of Talos. Oh, we could unlock Chancellor. Chancellor would be really good. Chancellors are just like basically our, our extra like extra specialist units up here give us like more passive benefits as well as active like things that we can do including like attempt assassinations on other leaders and stuff like that. Now that our Archimed Archidamia the Affable has completed her study of commerce how shall she contribute to the court? Diplomat can serve as governor or ambassador as governor. We can make her an uh, orator. We'll make her a diplomat. <laughs> Our adorable court monkey has inspired the imagination of the citizens. In the last few months, he has been the subject of poems, statues, and more than one popular drinking song. May they sing his praises for eternity. Plus 60 culture. Yo, it, it was worth it in the end. The victims of the bear attack are delivered safely to a settlement of their nation. Babylonia. The village leader thanks her people for their kindness. With the death of King Hatsuli, the strong, the Hatti rule of Hatti has passed to King Mursili. The new ruler has asked that a statue of the deceased King Hatsu Hatusili, the strong of Hatti, be created in Pella, claiming that Hatusili was particularly fond of the city. The Sipsalid family are outraged, pointing out that it is highly unusual for a Hatili, uh, sorry, Hittite, ruler to have a statue in Greece. Will you push through this request? How how angry will they be with me? Oh, I see. They're kind of, they're cautious. They're not super keen, all things considered. So this would maybe push them into being angry with us and that will hurt us. I would like to be on good terms. The statue will be made. We will finish our last quarry and then uh, get our second ambition. And I'll leave it there. You are now known as Philip the Strong. You have completed the ambition, control six quarries, plus 10 legitimacy. I think at this point you have a solid grasp of all of the things going on in this game. Like there really is a lot. It, to me, it feels both simpler and more complex than a lot of the Forex games that I've played. Um, I definitely, I think that my favorite Forex game or at least Civilizations game has always been Civ 3. And this feels like a kind of a direct sequel in some ways, but then it's taking cues from like Things, games like Crusader Kings, it's got a lot of built-in, like, almost role-play aspects, story aspects, and those really spice the game up. But you really can just kind of, like, you know, consider things that make sense in, within their context. And I mean, maybe you do that in other games as well, but, I, like, for me, I have, I've never really been good at 4X games or grand strategy games. I don't feel completely at a loss. I don't feel like uh, I, you know... Like there's, there is a lot of stuff going on. There's maybe a lot of stuff that I don't understand, but I don't feel unprepared. I'm trying to influence and affect our different family members. That makes sense now. I'm trying to grow our, our cities and those are kind of like almost like small bubbles of strategy, which is, is fun, like trying to grow each city in its own way. And then there's like the macro strategies of like, well, which nations are we gonna wanna uh, influence affect how, like how are we going to want to influence them are we going to go to war with them are we going to uh, send a spy master to, to go, go assassinate their leader are we going to try and marry into them there's a lot of options there's so many ways to play this game and there's so many decisions to make and like your player agency is insane i'd honestly like to do a series for this game if i hadn't been so busy doing like let's tries for so many games right now i would i would 100 percent be down to do a series on this game because it is just it's such a comfortable game this was old world if you did get something from this video if you did enjoy it uh, definitely hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content like this and i'll see you guys next time um if there is call for for this to do a series i i would consider doing that as well i haven't done any series in a while but uh this is just one i like super enjoy so 
Uh, I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy. Let's go.